Good morning and welcome to Hoosier Soccer Review. This is Jacob Sifuentes with you on Friday, October 11th, bringing you news about MLS, Indiana soccer, and U.S. men's national team. Today we are going to be talking about the U.S. national team playing Jamaica and Peru this weekend. We're going to talk about what those games mean for them and qualification. Obviously they've already booked their ticket to Brazil, so how are they going to use these games to gel as a team, develop their style, you know, so see what's going on with them. We're also going to do a rundown of the MLS playoff picture. Uh, it's been a pretty wild week, wild few weeks for that matter, um, in the MLS with less than three weeks left in the regular season. Uh, it's going to be pretty crazy, more teams than ever, with a chance to make the playoffs. So we'll be looking in there and also do a brief preview of IU men's and women's soccer teams, both in action this weekend. So to start, tonight, obviously, U.S. men's national team playing Jamaica, 6.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN um, in Kansas City. National team roster has been kind of shaken up a bit in this last week. We've had some injuries. Omar Gonzalez going down with a hip injury. Um, Eddie Johnson leaving camp on Wednesday with a groin injury. So Klinsman has brought in some reinforcements. We've seen Brad Davis, uh, Clarence Goodson, and Michael, Michael Orozco called in. Um, there's somebody else, can't remember off the top of my head, but Clemson's was bringing in reinforcements. Um, coming into this week, into this camp, Klinsman has said that, you know, yeah, we've qualified, but we're still, we're gunning for the top. You know, we want to put ourselves in the best position moving forward. Um, a chance to maybe be seated in the tournament, have a softer group if that would be possible. Um, so he called in his best group. This obviously is going to test the squad, test our depth um, and our grit. You know, any road game in CONCACAF qualifying with your best squad is going to be tough. Um, so obviously now there's some questions. Clint Dempsey not even in the group, still trying to gain fitness after some injuries that have been plaguing him recently. Um, so you look at the group we have. A lot of people thought that this might be a chance for some a run out for some people that were hoping to make the World Cup roster, but obviously with the group that Klinsman brought in, it's not the case. Um, a couple new names uh, that we haven't seen in a while, so Terrence Boyd, who I don't think has been on a roster for the better part of this year. I don't think he's seen any action in the hex. Um, with the injury to Eddie Johnson and the absence of Clint Dempsey, it could be a great opportunity for him to show. Um, when we've seen him before, I think it's pretty obvious he's a pretty raw talent. He's young, he's physically gifted, but um, on the international level, not as sharp as he maybe needs to be. But he's got time, you know. So we'll see if maybe he gets some minutes this weekend, see what he does with it. Um, you know, it's, it's always possible. There's plenty of time before the final roster is published. I mean, I think that's next May, April, so... Um, and if he doesn't make it, again, he's still young. He's got a bright future ahead of him, and he's doing really well um, in Austria. So you look at a player like Aaron Johansson, who a lot of people are very excited about, um, young dynamic talent that we haven't seen the likes of for a while. A lot of people wondering, Donovan's getting older. Who knows how much longer he'll be involved. Dempsey, you know, I think he's almost 30, just turned 30. You know, so he's this could be his last World Cup. Um and people are saying, where is that next group? What's the next crop of young players that are going to take over um, and, and carry this team moving forward? Um, we've got a lot of role players. We've got a lot of players that know how to, to fill in and you know, do the jobs that the national team needs them to do. You look at Brad Evans playing right back, not his natural position. Demarcus Beasley at left back, not his natural position. You know, he plays forward for his club a lot of the time. So... We have those players. We have guys who can be moved around um, when you know there's a need. But we need that one or two, maybe three dynamic players that you know can carry the team, can lead. You know, how many years when during the Bradley area when we weren't playing very, very good soccer, um, it wasn't pretty at least. And you know, Landon Donovan would just do everything in his power, and he'd get results. You know, if there were two goals, he might assist both. Assist one, have the goal, the other goal, you know. So um, 
to think Johansson is one of those players that people think he could be that guy. He could be that next player to to really put his, his stamp on this national team. Um, you know, and, and honestly, you know, not to impugn uh, Terrence Boyd's abilities, he could be that guy too. He's got to get a little more polished, but um, both of them, Boyd, I believe with Rapid Vienna and Johansson with AZ Alkmaar have been having good seasons, Johansson especially. So um, it'll be interesting to see how Klinsman decides to use them. I know there's talk that Johansson could be pushed out wide. So that would be interesting, maybe free him up to, to receive the ball facing up the field, um, be able to go at people. Um, like I said, he's got skills. He's one of those players that can do damage um, when he's got a defender on his heels. So, uh, yeah, so tonight against Jamaica, Jamaica struggled. I don't believe they've won a game in the hex. Um, challenged some people. They've got three, maybe four draws. And it's unrealistic, but they do have an outside chance at grabbing the fourth spot and getting into the playoff. It would require winning these last two games, um, which doesn't seem terribly likely. I'm not sure who their last match is against, but obviously at the U.S. on home soil. They've only beat us once all time, and that was in the semifinal round last year in Kingston. It doesn't look great for them, but you know they're going to come. They're going to fight for pride. They haven't won a game yet, um, and... I mean, don't tell me it doesn't matter to them. It's still World Cup qualifying. If there's even a hint of a chance, you have to imagine they're going to go at it full speed. So it's going to be a tough game, especially shorthanded as the national team is. Um, but we'll see how that goes. And then on Tuesday, the U.S. is in Panama at 10 p.m. on BN Sport. That is going to be a wild one. You're on the road in CONCACAF qualifying to close out the hex, and Panama is going to need those points. They're in a gridlock with Mexico right now to figure out who's going to get to go to the playoff, basically. So um, Panama and Mexico play tonight in Azteca, in Mexico City. Um, That's going to decide uh, the tone of that game when the U.S. goes down to Panama on Tuesday. Um, But still a lot to play for in the hex. A lot of teams um, involved with a chance to make some noise and possibly book a ticket to Brazil. So... You know, like I said, U.S. is a bit shorthanded. Um, some new faces, some people you wouldn't expect. A lot of people were surprised at uh, the individuals that Klinsman called in this week to replace some players with Davis and <clears throat> Chris Wondolowski. I know a lot of people are kind of done with him on the national team. He's older. Um, he hasn't really proven himself in tough matches and tight spots. You know, he had that hat trick against Belize. I think he's got something like six goals in seven games with the national team, but it's it's games like that. You know, three goals against Belize, which is expected. If he isn't scoring those goals, I'd be asking questions. Um, but then, you know, he disappears and doesn't really do much when we need a forward to step up in a legitimate international game against real competition last year in the Gold Cup. He misses that sitter against Panama, and, you know, that puts us put us in a pretty rough spot, wondering if we would even qualify for the knockout phase you know, in our first loss in the Gold Cup group stage ever. So I think that, you know, some people were, were wondering about that. How much time might um, Brad Davis get realistically? Although, you know, using Beasley as a left back, I know that uh, I believe Danny Williams is, or Fabian Johnson is hurt. So um, I guess that might open a door for him, for Brad Davis to come in and maybe get some time on the left side and you know, he's hoping to get a, get a spot on the squad in Brazil, so be a chance for him to show. Um, it's an MLS-heavy roster, uh, and I, I still see people online griping about that, but I think over this past year, you know, the squad's proven the guys from MLS can play. You know, they're gamers. They're going to show up, and they're going to they're gonna do whatever they can to get this team where it wants to go. So I'm, I'm a little over uh, all, the, all the complaining, all the maligning, MLS-heavy national team rosters that Klinsman's been calling in because if you look at the position the squad's in, it's with the guys that we've been taking, both from MLS and the national or and over in Europe. So you have to think Klinsman knows what he's doing. Um, you know, Some of our biggest moments have come from MLS guys. Eddie Johnson has just been lights out for the national team this year. So you know, we'll see how they do. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. It's clearly... Not a case where this team's going to phone in these last two games just because they booked their spot to Brazil. Um, FIFA has said that the the rankings that come out after this international date 
we'll decide the seeding for the World Cup.